Do you dare to grow? You know, that might seem like a funny question, but growth requires change, and sometimes change can be hard. Today we're wrapping up a series about God, and, and the question we're talking about today is, what does God have to do with daring to grow? I mean, you know, growing is a natural part of living. When we see things around us, things that are growing, they're green, they're growing new branches or, or shoots or leaves. You know, in an earlier video today, I talked about trees and brush kind of growing into the field, how they, they keep reaching for sunlight and growing and, and, and encroaching in the field. Well, nature's always changing, growing one way or another. And we people are, are kind of the same way. When we're growing, we're changing. We're, we're growing in new ways, we're changing in new ways. Whether it be skills or experience, you know, some of us are growing around the middles and we, we kind of wish we weren't, right? But seriously, sometimes people stop growing and, and, and then they, maybe they, they get tired or depressed or, or they don't want to change. And so let's pause for just a moment and consider these discussion questions. Are you still growing? Or does, maybe does change make you feel uncomfortable? In what ways are you growing? And when you do grow, do you feel good when you've reached a new level in, in, in something or another? You know, people are different from trees and plants by the fact that we have an intellect, we, 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 have a, we have a brain. You know, we talked a few weeks ago about curiosity. Well, people can choose to be curious, to investigate, to ask questions. And we also talked about our core values, right? The principles that we use to guide our decisions and actions. Have you thought about the different kinds of growth? You know, I like to look at nature because it's all around us. It's one thing I really enjoy about living in the, in the Calamo area. But if you considered the different kinds of growth, the changes we see in nature and in our physical beings is one kind of change. Another kind of change is in our spiritual lives. You know, our natural selves, our bodies, are, are, are limited by our lifespan. And we live in a world that we can't control. Just think about the weather. We had a drought uh, for a long time, and, and now we're in a, a stretch where we're gonna have rain for about a week. We have no control over that. Um, the violence that's happening in our world. How about the buildings collapsing of all things? You know, we are literally blown around by the winds of fate in, in our world. Now, our spiritual lives let us sink our inner selves into something bigger than we are, something stronger, something more constant than what we see in this world around us, something that we can really lock onto. Well, the center of our spiritual lives is God. Now, we can see God as God the Father, as God the Son, that, which would be Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Advocate or the Holy Spirit. And one way to think about a relationship with God is to compare it to a marriage or perhaps a special relationship with another person, a, a sister or, or mom or, or whatever. And so let's pause for just a moment and consider these discussion questions. How do you compare growth in nature to your spiritual growth? What do you think about sinking, sinking your roots into God? And do you see any similarities between growth in a human relationship and growth with God? I know that I've really grown in my relationship with God. And in my mind, it helps me to think of God in the three ways. Now, this isn't a, a theological point of view. This is, this is just kind of how I kind of think about it. I kind of think of God the Father as being this awesome, loving being that's master of all, a being that has all the answers. 
And we hear about the incredible nature of God the Father in the creation story in Genesis chapter 1. And then I see Jesus as kind of like a special friend, one that's far greater than I, but for some strange reason wants to be my friend. Jesus is every bit as great as God the Father, but he comes down to my level. In Revelation 3.20, we hear about the fact that Jesus knocks on our door. And when we let him in, he wants to have dinner with us. You know, having dinner with someone is, is, a, is really a special time or a special relationship with them. Well, Jesus loves us with a passion that, quite frankly, we just can't understand. Hear these words. Come from Romans chapter 8. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? For I am convinced, now this is Paul talking, I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, you kind of get the idea that nothing, anything else in nature, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul is describing this incredibly sticky love, if you will, a, a love that we just can't shake off, you know, like it, get a piece of something on your hand and you shake it and it won't come off. Well, for me, I find those words incredibly reassuring because it means that Satan can't pull me away from Jesus. It, it means that the troubles of this world can't pull me away from Jesus. All I have to do is open the door to my heart. And then Jesus sends us the gift of the Holy Advocate, the Holy Spirit. I think the Holy Advocate is probably more helpful because here we have this mysterious part of God that's with us always, that's in good times and bad, the, this, this part of God or this aspect of God that is constantly with us. And you know, I know that the Holy Advocate is real because I feel him in my heart. Every once in a while I feel this strange tingling sensation. I can't explain. I have found that there's two very special kinds of blessings that, that I get when I've sink my roots deep into the love of Jesus. One is that gift of peace in a heart that passes all human understanding. Just somehow, yeah, I, I, a week or two ago I described it as like a cold drink of water on a hot day. It's just a feeling that goes through us that things will be okay. <clears throat> and if that's not enough, he gives us a hope that is out of this world, a hope that means that we don't have to worry about the future, that God will take care of us no matter what happens. So let's take just a moment and consider these discussion questions. Do you feel that you have a living relationship with God? And then what is it like? How would you describe it? And then have you considered in what ways your relationship with God might grow? Might be a living, changing thing? And do you have questions? Well, our closing question today is, do you dare to grow? To wrestle with God, to ask those tough questions? Are you willing to train like an athlete and grow? Not muscles of flesh, but muscles of spirit. And to grow in your relationship with God? Well, let us pause for just a moment and just consider that question. Do you dare to grow? I've shared some thoughts about growth, how we can look to nature to better understand our relationship with God. What do you think? Are you searching? Are you struggling? Would you be willing to build up your spiritual strength to be a beacon of peace and hope for others? I'd like to hear your thoughts. If this is during the premiere time, you can throw a note in the chat box. You can call or text me at 517-588-8415 or an email or even our Calmo connection card at calamochurch.org forward slash connect dash with dash calamo. Maybe you'd like to talk about growth or this having a living relationship with God. Let's talk. I'd love to explore this topic with you. 
or maybe you have a friend or, or you know someone that's struggling. We'll share this message with them. Suggest that they reach out because I'd like, love to talk with them as well. And then we can explore together how God loves us so much and is just waiting to help us live into a relationship filled with peace and hope. How he sustains us in a troubled and broken world and helps us to make a difference in the world around us. And now for our Pentecost challenge. Spend five minutes, just five minutes or at least five minutes in prayer each day and talk with God. Tell him that you want to be fully alive and to grow, to grow deep roots into God's love and then build that intimate relationship with God that leads to that incredible peace and joy in our hearts and hope for the future. Take a moment, relax, and reflect about your next step in that growth process. But all in all, talk with God often. And folks, post a reminder. We need to talk with God often. Post a uh, reminder wherever it might make sense for you so that if you're like me, you say, ah, oh, I forgot. And just sit down right there on the spot. And even if it's not five minutes, take, the, take that, those few moments and talk to God about building in your relationship. And I pray that the awesome love of care of God the Father, Jesus our Lord and Savior, and the power of the Holy Spirit help you grow in relationship with Jesus Christ and help you grow in peace and hope that passes all human understanding so we are able to stand up with confidence in a lost and troubled world. Amen. Check us out next week as we enjoy a guest speaker. God is great. Amen. And now let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for being such a loving God and desiring that intimate, growing, alive relationship where we are living into a deeper relationship with you. We thank you so much for that, Lord, and we pray that you take my words and transform them so that each one of us hears that special message that you have just for each one of us. We pray these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. And friends, feel the awesome power and presence of the Holy Spirit this day as we are forgiven and adopted as God's holy children. God gives us that everlasting boost that we sometimes need to get back on track, to grow with curiosity and wisdom and peace and hope. Open your heart and feel the warmth and blessings of His love. Amen and amen. Bye for now. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed week.